honored to uh, introduce Dan Nesesky, uh, who leads the standards development and management team, and who's really the brains behind the operation, um, um, uh, including with his amazing team that he has, and I'm sure he'll tell you about too. So take it away, Dan. Thank you for that introduction, Ben. Can everyone see me, hear me, and see my uh, my presentation? Great, thank you. Um, so uh, I'm uh, sitting sort of a, across uh, the aisle uh, from from Ben, uh, not literally, but metaphorically, in in B Labs uh, overall work. And so, as as he mentioned, uh, I work on on uh, within the the umbrella portion of our organization that's referred to as the Standards Trust, and, and particularly uh, on uh, what we call the Standards Management Team, which is involved in uh, overseeing and developing. Uh, are impact focused um, standards and and tools to help businesses improve uh, their performance uh, on their impact. And it's been, uh, I think it's been two years uh, since I've engaged with with um, this event. I think it would have been back in New Orleans. Uh, I, I would I would have missed the one last year. And so the w the way that I wanted to spend uh, uh, our time uh, together here is give a, a, a pretty brief overview of some of the key things that we've been working on from a standards perspective uh, over over that time. Uh, knowing uh, the time constraints that we have, I'm, I'm gonna give those a pretty um, high level overview. Um, I also know that I tend to uh, ramble a little bit. I will try not to do that. Also knowing that we are behind schedule, uh, but we'll also try to uh, leave some space before we need to transition over to our first panel uh, to do a little bit of Q and A. And so, and so with that in mind, uh, uh, assuming we've got some time permitting, I'd encourage you as I as I walk through this uh, to to share any questions that you have uh, in the uh, the I believe the stage uh, section of of the chat function, uh, and then I can navigate over to those uh, to uh, to try to answer as as many as I can before we before we close off. And so. Um, B before I dive into some of the specific things that uh, we've uh, we've been working on, I, I also wanted to do a little bit of context setting and, and transition a little bit from what what Ben had been sharing. And I figured since this is an academic gathering, I would have the license to try uh, what is a um, what Ben would probably call it a, a, a nerdy uh, metaphor or or analogy uh, of of how we work. Uh, and it's a, it's a bit scientific, so not necessarily in uh, the space of uh, what you all are doing in your research, but I, but I figured it would be interesting to try it out and share. Uh, and so this is a beam of light. Um, and uh, one of the unique things about light uh, that, that's that been discovered over time is that it actually functions as very different things uh, in different circumstances. And specifically, uh, in some circumstances, it works uh, as if it's a particle. And, and in other circumstances, it works as if it's a wave. Um, you know, from a physics perspective, those things actually have very you know, important meetings in terms of what that means for light. Uh, and, and I won't get into those details, but but I think it's uh, an interesting metaphor uh, and analogy for uh, for B-Lab uh, and, and our work uh, collectively in, in that we are uh, in our collective network uh, extending to B academics and others uh, operating uh, simultaneously as, as a few different things. Uh, one is as a movement and as, as, as a community uh, as as Ben can speak to in terms of how we engage with our companies, uh, and then at the same time, it, it's distinct uh, that we are also a standards organization, uh, and that we are we are rooted in a set of these these credible standards that are really about offering a certification to distinguish uh, businesses and the the rigor behind their overall impact. Uh, those two things are quite distinct, but at the same time, I think it's the combination of those within our our network. Uh, that uh, is really a part of our special sauce uh, in, in terms of the impact that we have the potential to achieve. Uh, and so uh, with that in mind, sort of thinking about that light metaphor at, at the center of, of all of this is this, this sort of dual attribute, uh, but, but we always have an eye on that impact first opportunity, uh, which is uh, where uh, we try to always root uh, the, the things that we're doing on the standard side of our, of our organization. And so, um, uh, I'll walk through again a few a few high level initiatives that we've been working on just to give you a sense of where we've been um, uh, coming from, uh, as well as some some ideas around where we're, we're potentially heading uh, on this front, uh, and then I'll, and then I'll just take a look at the the questions uh, that folks have to see it, see to what extent I can answer them. And so, um, you know, as I think most people are are familiar, 
uh, at, at the core of our B Corp certification is a tool that we have called the B Impact Assessment that is itself updated and improved upon uh, uh, over time. Uh, and so not only is that assessment used to identify who is eligible to be a certified B Corporation, uh, but it's also intended to be a distribution mechanism for all businesses to identify where their current performance is and what are some really concrete actions that they can take and track uh, to, to, to continue on their journey towards becoming a certified B Corporation or towards becoming a, a more impactful business. Uh, the latest version of the B Impact Assessment was launched uh, what would have been uh, uh, just briefly after the last time that, I, that we uh, spoke together in that New Orleans session uh, at the beginning of 2019. Uh, and so that means that this version of the B Impact Assessment has been on the market for about a year and a half now. Uh, we published earlier this year uh, a bit of a, a, a year in review, particularly uh, focused on some of the data and scoring implications that we've seen from a new version. As you can imagine, anytime we're iterating upon the content of that tool, that affects uh, how, how any individual company is performing uh, on that tool in terms of their scores and things like that. There were a number of relatively significant changes that we made uh, in this version of the assessment, uh, ranging from how we actually organize the content to create a more insightful uh, presentation, presentation and, and um, assessment of a company's performance, uh, down to specific topical themes and things like that, that we either added or expanded upon, uh, including how we grapple with independent contractors as a part of a company's overall labor force. Uh, uh, as Ben mentioned, the continuing journey to really think about how we can uh, uh, embrace uh, and drive uh, uh, meaningful action around topics like justice, equity, diversity, inclusion, and things like that. In addition to the, the B Impact Assessment itself, uh, many of you might also be aware of a, of a, a new product uh, that we actually developed and, and launched earlier this year uh, in partnership with uh, the, the United Nations Global Compact uh, that's called uh, the SDG Action Manager. Uh, the, the overarching idea of, of, this, uh, of this new tool was to really combine the, uh, the strengths and the principles of the work of the UN Global Compact with their 10 principles. Uh, and the the management tool uh, expertise that we've created at B Lab through the B Impact Assessment to create something that that is specifically designed towards how a company can self assess, benchmark, and and improve their performance with a lens towards the Sustainable Development Goals specifically. Uh, that is all built off of uh, the B Impact Assessment platform as well as the the B Impact Assessment questions that we've historically had, but it essentially reframes and complements them with SDG specific indicators and metrics for, for all businesses to use. Those, uh, that tool was launched earlier this year. So, so unlike version six of the BIA, which has had about a year and a half of, uh, of, of on-ramp, uh, the SDG Action Manager has now been out on the market for, for about six months. Uh, and uh, we're excited to say that in those six months, uh, we've uh, had thousands of users already engaged with the tool uh, uh, globally uh, from, from uh, 148 different countries. Uh, and and just like we always work on the B Impact Assessment and uh, and our, our other initiatives, this will be an iterative process. And so we're we're taking a look at uh, how, how the experience has been for our users since that initial launch, following our our relatively rigorous development process uh, through 2019 to identify how we'll we'll be able to continue to improve uh, this tool uh, for businesses as well. The other um, high level um, things that we've been working on on, on a um, from a from a standards management perspective that I think is always useful to share uh, is is one I think I think we'll, we'll, you'll get to hear from uh, uh, Chris a little bit later uh, about some of his research and work about uh, multinational engagement uh, with the certified B Corporation uh, movement and community uh, and and as a part of uh, that one of the things that we've done is actually gone through a process to identify. Uh, what our certification requirements actually need to be for, for the largest businesses in the world, knowing that historically our standards have been developed for those innovative small to mid-sized businesses. We needed to think through uh, what are unique attributes of, of large companies and, and, and how we need to adjust our processes and our standards themselves uh, to, uh, to reflect what leadership looks like in that particular context. Um, and, and among the things that developed from that process was actually an additional set of requirements for, for large companies that we refer to as baseline requirements. Say, in addition to achieving a minimum score on the B Impact Assessment and the other requirements that we've historically set 
uh, for companies. There are a certain minimum set of, of practices that all multinationals must have in place in order to appropriately consider themselves leaders in this movement uh, and therefore uh, deserving of the, uh, the B Corp certification. Um, uh, as a part of that, we also developed a new multinational specific and focused uh, subcommittee of our standards advisory council to make sure that we are we are keeping a an appropriate um, uh, uh, application uh, and evolution of those specific standards for those companies over time as well. Uh, and then finally, uh, we we are regularly developing uh, industry specific positions regarding company eligibility on uh, particularly what we consider to be controversial industries or industries where we recognize that there is the need for a set of industry specific indicators to really differentiate. Uh, companies uh, with, uh, uh, who are performing well uh, versus those who, who aren't. Uh, and that takes uh, two different forms, uh, some of which are actually just position statements that are available on our webpage under, under our controversial issues page. You can just Google search it, uh, which are specific requirements for each individual company uh, in, a, in, a, in that industry uh, to be eligible. Uh, but then there are also things that we develop within our B Impact Assessment tools that we refer to as industry addenda. Uh, that are designed to uh, create a, a more specific set of indicators to differentiate that performance without necessarily requiring individual practices within that industry um, uh, to be eligible. Uh, and so two examples of things that we we would uh, we are exploring uh, uh, both from a controversial issue standpoint as well as an addenda uh, standpoint is is for instance fossil fuels. Um, uh, what would uh, be a, a requirement for companies uh, in the fossil fuel industry? Uh, if they are eligible at all uh, to become uh, certified B corporations, uh, and then another example is um, the finance industry, where there where there's uh, we're exploring a new addenda uh, to our standards to make sure that we are asking a specific set of questions, recognizing that that companies involved in financial services uh, need to be asked a different set of questions uh, to evaluate their performance with the B Impact Assessment compared to say a traditional consultant or a manufacturer uh, or or anything like that. Um, and, and then finally, uh, uh, beyond some of this ongoing work, uh, and, and I think as a, as a connection to, to some of the things that Ben shared and even, even Jessica shared at the beginning around the, the where we are as a world right now, um, we, we've also started to, to begin a, a conversation and a process to actually take a step back uh, and recognize that our overall approach to what our certification requirements have been um, have served us really well for the 15 years of B-Lab's existence. Um, but at the same time, um, uh, we and the world are uh, in uh, what, what feels to be pretty drastically different circumstances right now. Um, there's the COVID pandemic. There's the racial justice uprisings. Uh, there's the uh, emerging recognition of, of the climate emergency that we're facing. Uh, and it's, it's all of those things that, that can both, uh, you know, be overwhelming and feel like a, um, a, a real challenge and burden uh, to, to the state of the world. Uh, but at the same time, uh, signals really important topics that that B Lab and B Corps uh, need to be grappling with. And so, and so, the big question that we're going to be exploring uh, for for some time uh, now, moving forward, is in that context, uh, what does leadership in this space actually look like? Uh, and do our uh, does our approach to certification and standards reflect that leadership? Uh, and if not, what are some of the potential changes that we can make to really make sure that we are meeting that moment and accelerating the impact? Uh, that our movement um, can and and should have. A and uh, I'll close before I look back to any questions, assuming that we do have a little bit of time uh, for me to answer uh, those. And I'll defer to Summer, knowing that I'm going to be passing it back off to her uh, as to how much time we potentially have on that. Uh, with saying, uh, Ben um, uh, obviously extended the, um, the appreciation and recognition of all of the great work that uh, the um, the academic community is doing uh, on these topics. And so uh, in addition to th thank you for having me speak here, uh, thank you for all the work that you do. And, and just as Ben mentioned, there's a really uh, interesting and powerful opportunity for academics like yourselves to really think about how you contribute to that research agenda around how B Corps are um, uh, both contributing to the world that we wanna see as well as how they might be more resilient and things like that. Um, all of our standards work, uh, is uh, intended to be as based on objective uh, research and materials and results as possible. Um, this is also a really tough space and it's a rapidly evolving space. And so, so in your own research and, and, and your work, 
uh, we'd love to hear the things that you are seeing and finding, particularly as it relates to what actually drives impact, what makes an impactful business, what produces real positive outcomes for workers, communities, the environment, et cetera. Because it's that type of research that, that goes right back into all of the work that we're doing around our standards and how we can inform what it means to be a leader and how we can help businesses improve. Uh, and so uh, it, I would just encourage you to keep doing what you're doing and, and sharing them with us at B-Lab to make sure that we can really um, uh, have our work be informed by the work that you're doing. Um, Dan, would you mind, um, in the interest of time, since I'm actually the, the main problem in terms of delaying everybody, um, only pick maybe uh, two two questions from the stage chat there. And if people have other questions, you can send direct messages to Dan via the people um, chat. You guys can set up sort of contact that way. Thank you. Great. So, so I'll, I'll start with, there's a few questions around the SDGs. Uh, and, and I think uh, the, the distinction between the B Impact Assessment and the SDG Action Manager is to recognize that while there is overlap, there is opportunities uh, to, to treat them somewhat differently. But, but I will say, in addition to creating that new specific SDG tool uh, in the SDG Action Manager, uh, what, what we anticipate seeing is, is sort of a virtuous loop between the two. Uh, in that we developed the SDG Action Manager, and through that, we're able to identify where there might have been historic gaps in the B Impact Assessment to, uh, based on the SDGs to then fill in uh, some of that content. And so as we continue to evolve the B Impact Assessment specifically, uh, we, will, we will certainly be taking into consideration the SDGs writ large uh, to the extent that we can, but also the specific learnings that we have from the SDG Action Manager uh, and how uh, those two things can actually make sure that they continue to be uh, parallel and complementary uh, and connected to one another. So I, I also, uh, I'll, and I, I see a question around contact information and things like that. I'm happy to share this, um, uh, this presentation with a few links, but also, uh, yes, uh, uh, feel free to connect with me uh, as appropriate afterwards, particularly for any questions that I don't get to answer. I see a question around uh, how the BIA can be better examined uh, for case studies, comparison, research, et cetera. Um, and, and, and what I'm seeing is, is some particular challenge uh, in, in the comment around uh, really how to understand and interpret some of the scores um, uh, and how to actually use that. And I think that's actually a really great um, uh, question. And, and frankly, I don't have a great answer, except for to acknowledge that it's pretty challenging. One thing I will point out is earlier this year, we developed uh, a whole new series of, of materials and, and what we refer to as articles in, in our quote unquote knowledge base, which exists both publicly and with, within the B Impact Assessment. Uh, and included in that is, is some more detailed overviews of the the background methodology and rationale behind our overall scoring approach. Uh, and so we, we hope uh, that would be uh, 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 potentially useful for you to potentially understand the, those implications. I'll also add that our, our, one of our objectives in the creation of version six of the B Impact Assessment uh, was to create uh, a, a more consistent overarching scoring methodology that would ideally allow for an easier understanding of the comparability of performance across different businesses uh, and things like that. Um, there's probably a lot more to dive in there, uh, but uh, potentially after accessing some of those materials for any further um, uh, questions or, or feedback on how we can continue to, to improve or clarify uh, what we're doing uh, would always be much appreciated. And, and so I, I think with that, I will um, pass it back to you, Sarah. Great, thank you so much for Dan. Uh, for that, Dan, and also Ben, um, we appreciate your time. That was really interesting.